Okay, so last question for you, and I know this could probably be a whole show. So maybe like a 10 minute answer, but just role of nutrition in all this. You've, you've alluded to it before earlier. Um, so role of nutrition for people who are dealing with knees and Achilles and trying to get that better or just optimize their own tendon health and performance. So, so there's definitely a role for nutrition. Um, we know that we know that from the first nutrition study ever performed, the first nutrition study ever performed was in the 1700s by this Scottish doctor who was on a, on a ship and basically all of these sailors were getting scurvy and they were losing their teeth and their scars were coming open, their hair were falling out. And so he did an experiment where he gave, you know, all kinds of really disgusting things to 10 of the sailors and two of them got a lemon and two, two other citrus fruits. And within days, those two that got the lemon and the citrus fruit got better. So there's obviously a vitamin C component to it. We know from some of the studies that we've done that, that the vitamin C, the reason that it works and the reason it's essential is because it, it is a co mandatory cofactor in this prolyl hydroxylase reaction where we're making collagen. And what it does is you can't export collagen from a cell unless you have that reaction. And every time you have that reaction, you consume a molecule of vitamin C. So it's not that we use it and we can reuse it and reuse it and reuse it. It's that every time you use it, it's gone. And so when you wake up in the morning, what, we, what we're finding from some of the studies we're doing is it looks like your vitamin C content in your, in your tissues is really, really low. So that's one component that you have to have. You have to have some sort of a vitamin C component. And the other thing that we've been looking at quite extensively is, is the role of, of collagen or gelatin, um, material, just dietary collagen or dietary gelatin. The difference between them, gelatin is, is basically, um, it's all collagen. It's all coming from skin or bones or, or connective tissues from either you know, cows or pork or chicken or fish. So there's not a vegetarian source of it. That's the number one thing. So what we'll find a lot with our athletes is, oh, you know what? I went vegetarian and now I'm getting all these, these niggles, these tendon injuries, these, these ligament problems. My knees are hurting me more. It's not surprising because they've lost all of their dietary source of, of collagen. The reason that this is potentially interesting is because, you know, collagen is essentially three amino acids. It's glycine, it's proline, and it's lysine to a large degree. There, the glycine is every single third amino acid. It goes glycine, any amino acid, and then a proline hydroxyproline. So one third of all collagen is glycine. So you you need a lot of you need a good amount of glycine. There's a a, a group out of um, out of Brazil who've shown that if you supplement with glycine, you can have these great effects. They were giving just goo gobs of glycine. It's not physiologically possible to do that in a human. Um, but so the glycine and the proline are really, really important for building and for building this collagen material. When we get up in the morning, we know that we don't have many of these, these nutrients around. We can break some stuff down. But as, we, as we've talked about before, collagen isn't something that's breaking down all the time in our, in our body. It's a more, one of the more stable proteins in our body. So we're not getting as much turnover there. So we potentially have this need for it. And what we've shown is that as you increase um, the dietary intake of, of either hydrolyzed collagen or gelatin, and the hydrolyzed collagen is just taking the gelatin that you've isolated out of the skin and bones and all of those things, and you just use an enzyme to cut it up so that it no longer forms a gel. And that just means that it's you can dissolve it in water, you can dissolve it in, in whatever you're looking to do. Um, and so what we've, what we've seen is that when we did the first study on this in humans, we showed that uh, if you give 15 grams of gelatin before you do um, an activity that's going to increase collagen synthesis, what we, what we found is that we got a, a nice robust effect that was probably twice as, twice as much as we got from a placebo control, where we got twice as much of an indicator of collagen synthesis based on having the 15 grams of gelatin before we did our exercise. And the reason we do it before is because tendons and ligaments, unlike muscle, they don't have as much blood supply to them. So the tendon is relatively avascular. The ligaments are completely avascular. They get their nutrients from the fluid that's around them. And so if you need the, the nutrients from the fluid and it's a dense material, 
you're not going to get in there unless you're actually squeezing out the liquid that's in it. And then as it recovers, so every time we pull on a tendon, the tendon gets longer, but it gets skinnier. So we squeeze out all the water that's in it. That's the, one of the things that causes the creep. And then when we relax, it's going to suck up the liquid from the environment. So if we have the nutrients, the glycine, the proline, and all of those things in the environment, it should be able to suck those things up while it brings back the liquid. And that's going to bring in the nutrients that the cells need to make new collagen. So we give those supplements 30, well, 30 minutes to an hour before we're going to do training. And then basically, then you combine that with the loading of the areas that you need to target. So if you're worried about your Achilles, you're going to do you know, we do six minutes of jump rope. We don't do 20 minutes of jump rope. We do six minutes because you only need a few jumps in order to maximally get the stimulus for your for your tendons to, to adapt. It only takes about five to 10 minutes of activity. And then it takes another eight hours, six to eight hours of rest before those cells will respond again. So ideally we do something uh, in the morning, we do something in the evening. Um, if you're going to do a long training bout and that's going to be in the morning, I'm going to do my little protective session in the evening. With I going to give my nutrition, I can do my nutrition before any session that I want to. But if I'm going to do a protected session, it's only for my tendons, my ligaments, my connective tissues. It's going to be a short session, and I'm going to do an hour before I'm going to have the the gelatin or the hydrolyzed collagen. And in that way, what we're trying to do is we're just trying to provide a loading stimulus. This kind of stress relaxation loading that we talk about together with the amino acids that are necessary to build new collagen. Now what we're trying to do is we're trying to fix any damage that's occurred within the tendon. I gotcha. That, that's awesome stuff. And so, uh, well, one question with all that. So, so vitamin C and then, then, uh, collagen, um, what, is there like a specific, um, uh, or gelatin you said you're giving these athletes that is there like uh, is there any guidelines when going out and get, i know like i do like a bone broth collagen supplement i mean is there any way to is there any guidelines on supplementation no, a lot of them a lot of them it, it doesn't necessarily we don't know that there's a difference between brands we don't know that there's a difference between gelatin and coll- and hydrolyzed collagen mm-hmm. it does seem like in different people some of them respond really well to gelatin and not as well to hydrolyzed collagen so again maybe some people can uh, absorb it and digest it better in one form or another. But we haven't done all the tests necessary to know. We haven't even done the test to say, look, collagen is better than, say, whey protein. Mm-hmm. So we have to do those things. It's still very early days for the collagen nutritional supplementation. There's many more companies touting all of these wonderful mm-hmm. benefits than there is actual studies saying that there are actually any benefits. And so we're trying to we're trying to stay ahead by by doing as many studies on these things as we can. Um, but really, what we what we would do is we would for a lot of our athletes, they'll take in a gelatin, 15 grams. It's going to be in a, like a glass of orange juice, and the gelatin doesn't dissolve in there. They're just going to take mm-hmm. it and they're just going to drink it down. And it's going to taste horrible. <laughs> sure, people, people do it in the. I I know people who put the gelatin into milk and stir it in and then they add hot milk and they do it in their, they do it in their morning latte and then they have an orange juice with their breakfast. Now they've got both the collagen and the vitamin C. So people can do it in a lot of different ways. One of the great um, sport nutritionists that that I've worked with, he was doing it in, um, he would do it at a, in a chocolate uh, dessert. So he would make this really beautiful like mousse, that, that had the gelatin in it and it would it would be gelatin and hydrolyzed collagen but it was in this chocolate dessert you can do it in a lot of different ways there's beautiful ways to do it one of the old ways of doing it is just eating steak um, and actually eating the part that's chewy um, <laughs> because that's where we used to get all of these nutrients we've become lazy in our f- food eating as well as everything else so we don't like to actually have to chew on stuff um you know, one of the one of my good friends, um, who used to be the nutritionist for the English Institute of Sport, Jenny, Jenny Pierce, she used to she called it her hyena diet, which is you eat the bones, you eat the cartilage off the end, you eat all the stuff that we don't eat anymore, and that's that's where you get it from, and that's a completely natural way to get it. We take it as a supplement because people are reluctant to take in those those sources anymore. <laughs> I love it. You can almost liken like the people show animals who can really jump high. It's the wild cats, you know, 
So right. maybe there's something to do with it. I don't know, but uh, and it's a good reminder, regardless. Like that's uh, I'm I'll shoot. I'm gonna go after this podcast. I'm gonna go jump. I'm gonna go in the backyard, do some line hops for a few minutes, and drink some orange juice. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's good. Uh, I feel like I had. Oh yeah, last question. Okay, um, so it was just a quick little follow up. But so you mentioned like doing this for for health, like a, a comp- mm-hmm. companion session for health, uh, or, or the supplementation or anything like. Could it also, like, if I'm perfectly healthy and I'm a sprinter or a jumper, I just want to jump higher, run faster, get more out of my tendon stiffness, same same kind of effect and benefit? Or? Yeah. So what you're doing there by the collagen is we think we're increasing collagen synthesis. And remember, there's two things that go into stiffness. There's the, there's the collagen content and the organization, but there's also the cross-linking. So if you put it in there, if you are eating it and you're, and you're doing your training – what you're doing is you're combining the two things. You're combining the increase in collagen synthesis with the potential to cross-link what you've made by doing your training for performance. So if I want to take an athlete and I want to combine these things, a perfectly healthy athlete, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do before their high-quality sessions, before their sprint repeats, before they're, before they're going to get in and do their really high-quality work, that's when I'm going to go in and give them the collagen. First thing it's going to do, it's going to target it to the areas that I'm working. It's going to target it to my hamstring. It's going to target to other areas. And then what it's going to also do is it's going to give me the potential to say, okay, now I'm using my loading to give me lots of cross links in those areas where I'm putting those things in because I'm doing the fast movements. So it's combining the two things. If I want to do it for health and robustness, now what I could do is I could do slower movements and target it and but not be building up the cross links and that's going to give me the health based component i can do it for performance i can do it for health in both situations you're increasing the robustness of the tissue but in one situation you're making it so that you're fixing any injuries and you're and you're making it so that you're not as likely to get a muscle pull and the other you're improving performance so the way that we would do it through a season is is we would be alternating these things so early in a season when it's really about getting the volume of sprints or we're getting a volume of whatever loads we're doing now we're going to do some protective movements some slow movements together with the together with the intervention and as we get closer and closer to competition now what we're going to do is we're going to decrease those we're going to increase our fast movements and every individual because they have different genetics and there's a whole genetic component to tendon injury which is beautifully done by a friend of mine, George McConey, out of uh, out of out of Cape Town. Now he's in now he's in Botswana. But they had shown beautifully that there's a number of different polymorphisms that predispose you to tendon injury. So if I have two athletes and one of them has a lot of those polymorphisms, now I need to know. Okay, they're going to get injured more easily. I'm going to keep the protective movements later into the season or all the way through the season. This person's never had a muscle pull. I'm not worried or never had a tendon injury. I'm not worried about them. I'm going to keep the, their health-based movements lower, and I'm really going to jack up their plyometric load or their max power work as they get closer to, to competition. Oh, that's great stuff to finish on. And just like that spectrum and bandwidth of how to utilize it, um, just great way to tie things up, Keith. I really appreciate this talk, your time. I just... I think that the the tendon thing, like like I mentioned, like you know my own project, research project, ten years ago, I've convoluted some stuff. I think it easily can be, but uh, I think that 